the top three agencies, federal, mm -hmm. is um, Department of Health and Human Services. They spend about $1.7 trillion a year. Um, you have Department of Defense. Um, usually they're number one, but because of COVID, Department of Health and Human Services increased their budget. Sure. DOD is about $1.5 trillion. And then Social Security Administration, they're roughly around $1.3 trillion. And I'm just talking about the top three now. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing business with Department of Defense, your margins are going to be higher. So mm -hmm. let's say you win a contract for $4 million, right? You're probably going to pocket about a million. Mm. The Department of Defense, because their margins are higher. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but federal agencies are broken down into mission essential functions. And I know I'm talking a little bit too techy up here, mm. but, and this is where you know, you know, as we go into this recession, who to do business with. So you have primary mission essential functions and you have mission essential functions. So certain agencies, no matter what happens, their budget is forecasted five years in advance. Like, mm. They always have money coming in. Some agencies, their budget may be one to two years. Gotcha. So they may reduce their budget in the, any event of a recession. But if you do business with DOD, which anybody can, um, they will always have money coming in. So if you want a $5 million contract, you're going to pocket about a million dollars. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. We like, we like those margins. I like those margins. I like those margins. I mean, because it's, it's, this is not, we want to actually provide a great service, obviously, yeah, to the government. But even you're not providing a service. It's finding a good company that it's can provide the service. a good service. company that can And they don't call them. you, right? They just do their thing? They do what they do? We talking about the agency or the company? No, nah, the company that you hire. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of familiar with the space a little bit because I uh, interviewed my man Jason White a couple times. And uh, my boy Brandon... He's trying to get into it, which we could probably hire Brandon. We take, give him a salary him a to salary. kind of figure it out, mm -hmm. to learn it. You got a course? Yes, have a program, yes. We give him, uh, we give him um, the program, train, teach. Mm -hmm. I'm with that. I am into non-comfortable or non-traditional ways of making money as an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, you think of a product, sell it, Make money, reinvest, yeah. sell it. Welcome to another edition Welcome of the to social another edition of the social. Yo, hold on, podcast, real quick, real quick, real quick, because I, I was in a uh, we did the podcast boot camp, and my guy said, "Yo, you need to just jump into the information because people need information." And is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're just we're jumping, jumping into right it. into the information. I gotta say, real quick though, yep. your beard looks amazing. My beard does look amazing. You know why? Why? Because I use King's Chambers. King's beard Chambers. Oil. Okay, I, I I haven't used it yet, <laughs> but I'm actually using use it right now. I just want to okay. smell it because these would be great gifts. What's your Instagram? Ooh. At Freddy's Blades. Freddy's At Blades. Freddy's Blades. That's F R E D D I E S. B L A D E S. B she, okay, coconut. Can she use it on her edges? Yes, she can. I can. Yes, can. Is it going to help them grow? Yes, you will. You're thin. You're thin. I am right, right here. Cool. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. F R E D D I E S D L A D E S. F R E D D I E S. B L A D E S. Freddie's place. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get it. You guys, I was telling you. I just look to see what my beard looks like by the end of the show. We appreciate this. King's Chamber beard oil. And I really did use it on. First of all, we just got to acknowledge that when I sit like this, it looks like I have no edges, but it's the shine from my edge control, you guys. So we get into the conversation. You gotta explain it. So anyway, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. <laughs> Biggest, put your finger away. Biggest lesson where we see. introduce and have conversations with dope, high level entrepreneurs. My biggest lesson of the week, uh, of the last couple of days. Biggest lesson of the last couple of days. And I can put this on my hands too, right? Yes. I can rub it in. Okay, cool. That's good. Vitamin E. All right, cool. I need some E. You ready? Yeah. Biggest lesson you learned this week. I don't know. I can't think of one right now. What you got? Biggest lesson I learned this week is that you got to keep growing. One, because I put on an event and a person that I booked to speak at the event taught me, I think, more than I taught. I just learned from the actual guests. 
I love uh, it. Sean Canal. Um, he's just an amazing uh, YouTuber. So I'm teaching the podcasting space on how to build um, a podcast mm -hmm. and uh, how to monetize it. Mm -hmm. And he went so heavy on YouTube and I was very transparent, like, yo, do an audit of my channel. And he did an audit of my channel and um, really, really helped. So that's one. Two is um, when you have a big idea, you have to see it. I talked about it on the morning meetup yesterday that sometimes we have an idea and it's in our head. But, and I had this idea, I had this really, really big idea and I was talking to some people about it. But finally, at that event, I saw it. Like I, I saw the thing. You know, sometimes in your head, was this last then you night? catch a vision. No, it was like two nights ago. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have an idea, you think of some stuff that you want to do, but then at some point you see something. It's almost like a vision. I don't know how to explain it. But I saw the crowds of people. I saw the information that we'd be teaching. I just caught these glimpses. And I said, oh, now we got to move on it. And a lot of times I move on ideas that I don't see. Yeah. But I just move on them because they're a good idea. You know, I have a lesson. And, and thank you. That helped me to think about how to put it in words. My biggest lesson from the week would have to be uh, create your own opportunity. Mm. And this is so relevant because I remember what really drove me to become an entrepreneur was really disliking something about a company that I worked for, right? Like whether it was the people or the product or the location, the commute, whatever it was, it was never perfect. I knew that I didn't want to be in a job. So I created my own thing and that's how I survived. Now, last night we went to a movie premiere, shout out to Ernestine Johnson, B. Simone, Brie Renee and Jackie O, they dropped a private screening of their movie Scheme Queens. Yeah. Yep. And I remember being in Las Vegas with Ernestine a few weeks ago. And she was saying that just in this space right now of acting, auditions are scarce. There's only a few, you know, Black people who are getting these roles and they get tired of just waiting for the opportunity. So these four ladies got together and they created their own opportunity. And I got to say, that movie was bigger than I expected. Like, yeah. it was so well produced. The very opening scene, I was like, okay, production. Mm -hmm. But it was another reminder, like, if you're not being cast for the role, write your own movie. If you don't like yeah. your job, make create your own and there comes a point i think is going to be a perfect segue into day into today's conversation where so many people are just looking for um or or not satisfied with the opportunities that they currently have not satisfied with current life lifestyle and we got to create more opportunities but what happens when you don't have the money to create these opportunities like out of pocket we were literally just talking to our guest today about investing in Senegal and what that looks like. And I said to myself, or I said to Dave, well, we got a couple of dollars to invest. And then he says, why would you need your own money? Yeah, with like, uh, disdain. With disdain. He yeah. said it like, hey, low level thinker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Low vibrational thing. With that said, <laughs> I want to bring up our amazing guest for the day. We want you to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the people who you are and what you do. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you both for having me on the show today. Um, my name is Fox Wade, um, CEO of Black Fox, CEO of GovCom Blueprint. Real quick, Fox is your real first name? We're going to say Yes. I was about to say, that's way too cool to be a real first name. <laughs> you know, you come out, Fox Way. That sounds like a stage name. Yeah. What's your real first name? Marcellus. Marcellus. Okay. So you went with Fox. Yep, go with Fox. I ain't mad. <laughs> Not that Marcellus is a nice name. I like just, Marcellus. But Fox I Wade? know a few Marcelluses. That's a more common name than you probably You'll know. You'll remember Fox Wade. Fox Wade is a smooth name. First of all, yeah. my name is Fox. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, proceed. I'm sorry. <laughs> So CEO of Black Fox, CEO of GovCom Blueprint, and uh, CEO of Wade Inc. And um, um, I've been in the government contracting space for almost five years now, um, um, doing some great stuff for Department of Defense, Department of Health and Human Services, Social Security Administration. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. How many contracts we have with government agencies? Mm. That's dope. What was your biggest contract and what was it for? Biggest contract to date is... 5.4 million. Um, but our biggest contract soon 
is going to be $35 million. <sighs> but talking about me, the five. Talking about the five, okay, though. Okay, okay. All right? The $5.6 million is with the Maryland Motor Vehicle Administration um, to where we provide professional services. So have you ever been to the uh, MVA before, like the physical the physical place, MVA? MVA? Yep. What's to that? get like Motor your registration, vehicle. your driver's oh, license. The DMV? Oh, the DMV. DMV right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Maryland, we call it MVA. I think down here you call it DMV. Gotcha. Yeah. So you probably went up to the desk and you saw a clerk and they took your information. Yeah. But in your head, you're thinking that they are a employee of the DMV. For sure. But no, they, some people are contractors, meaning that we lease people out to the DMV to provide professional services. And we charge them an hourly rate for those people. So it's like a um, temp agency? staff agency. Similar, but they are, they are employees of Black Fox. That's a staffing agency, That's isn't a staffing it? staffing agency. <laughs> staffing agencies make a certain percentage when they staff a position. And those, those positions belong to the DMV. They belong to my company. They're employees of Black Fox, but we staff augment them too that particular government agency. Okay, so break this down for me. The DMV, why would they utilize this method versus just hiring their own staff? Because the government understands that small businesses are the engine of America, right? So you have 500 to almost 700 billions of dollars that the government must push down to make sure that small businesses are creating jobs for the economy. Um, and that's what we call, you know, the space of government contract on a professional services side. So they push it down and they will say, OK, this program, because each government agency has a program and those programs are funded by uh, the federal. Uh, uh, I forgot the, the top level, but they're funded. So they'll say this program, you need 20 million for operations. Mm -hmm. 15 of that million is going to go to small businesses. Mm -hmm. So this is where they'll say we need. 10 positions of general administrative clerks, male people, you name it. And they'll push out a solicitation and say, uh, small businesses, here's an opportunity for you, for you to compete. Or they may call you up and say, uh, because you're a part of a small business program, we just want to give you the contract. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to say that word give you, but because you have that certification, they'll say, because you meet the right requirements, you are given these 10 people. And so let's say, for example, that a clerk makes $20 an hour, right? $20 an hour. Then you got to add on benefits for them. Then you got to pay unemployment insurance, payroll insurance, mm -hmm. all these different things. Then you have, uh, you got to pay for your own business overhead. So all that's a part of a wrap rate uh, calculation. And so once that's done, I'm going to tack on my profit to it. And that's what I'm going to charge the government. So I may mm -hmm. be charging this person $20 an hour. Well, I may be paying this person $20 an hour, but I'm probably going to end up charging the government $60 an hour. Mm. Golly. Mm. Out of the 5.8, you said a million? 5.8, how much you get? <laughs> I don't think we need to talk numbers on that. But um, More than two? a good, good, good percentage would be about 300K to 400K. A of pure the profit. Five, of the 5 million? Of, a pure profit. And I'm not talking about, no, we have salaries in the company. So oh. we're getting our salaries... And that's pure profit in the company. But you don't really got to do nothing for the money. Right? You bring the, uh, not do anything, but you put the staff in the MVA or the DMV. And I'm sure they have their own policies and procedures that they want this person to that's do, right? right? So we, we so, so, so in the, in the, in the contract, it will say that the government agency will facilitate all equipment, everything. So training, the, the, our employees <clears throat> report directly to the DMV. They're part of their staff meetings, everything. But we provide them with benefits. We provide them with everything they need. So know, their training. check comes from you? Their check comes from us. You know, what's interesting is <clears throat> people have been trying to get me involved with government contracts since I was like in my 20s, right? And I always, at first, I looked at it like it was a scam. I thought like, Average people don't just get access to these yeah. government contracts, making all this money, like, you know, providing all the water to the school systems or whatever the case may be. And then when I finally sat down to take a look at it again for the first time, like in my 20s. And so we're talking 20 years ago, 15 plus years ago, I looked at the process and said, this is too much work. Mm. It's not worth it. Yeah. Now, yeah. now it depends, right? So. The government procures 
there's, there's three different levels, mm-hmm. right? So there's micro purchases. Anything less than $50,000, anybody can win that contract. Mm-hmm. Like literally, it's probably like a phone conversation or a one pager response to that mm-hmm. easily. Like I've won a $4,500 contract in two hours. Literally right. just, just looking at it and go, you know what? Let me just shoot my shot. Send it. And they say, oh, contract agreement. Yeah. Um, anything above $250,000, it has to go through a technical evaluation because the government is looking at that as in we're risking our money because a government agency, they have a mission, goals, and objectives that they must meet. And mm-hmm. they're partnering with us to help them facilitate those goals. Yeah. So they want to make sure they bring on the right partner mm-hmm. to facilitate that because we have screwed it up. I'm not saying uh, my company, but our community have screwed up contracts to where we win them and we not deliver. And now they got to cancel the contract. They got to go find another vendor to, 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 do, the, to do the work because yeah. they have a mission. Yeah. Mm. This don't have a whole lot to do with anything or what we're talking about. It kinda though. Do you think that the Girl Scouts are pimping these girls? What? <laughs> I was at a school, this is years ago, and I said, think think about this. Think about this now. Hear okay, me out. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm going with it. I create a product. <laughs> Cookies, let's say. <laughs> And I give these little girls the cookies to go sell the cookies and bring me my money back. So they're using the mission of women. They're using a mission, I guess. I don't know what the mission is, but and maybe I don't understand how it works. And maybe somebody that was in Girl Scouts still like kill me for it. But I mean, wouldn't that be the case of any creator? or CEO who started a company like, I created a product. I have salespeople that go out and sell this product and bring me back my money, right? Like, yeah. Too. <laughs> so maybe like, maybe it's part of the thought of the like government contracted thing. <laughs> but, like, <yo. laughs> but that's the government too, right? What do you mean? The government gets their what? Money. Okay. They get they 30%. Okay. Yeah, right? You make money, they make money too. They're going to get they 30% no matter what you do. I wonder how they came up with that process. Is is Girl Scouts, I would imagine it's a non-profit. Yeah. Somebody's making money, but the little girls aren't. Well, and the and cookies so are delicious. The, the little <laughs> girls are learning leadership skills mm-hmm. and, you know, what it's like to set goals and accomplish these goals. Good. And they're learning sales skills, which I believe if you have sales skills, you can survive. Like you never, you'll never be broke if you actually have and deploy sales skills, not just have, but have and deploy your sales skills. Mm. Um, I was never a Girl Scout. That the whole like group organized sisterhood thing never really appealed to me. So um, I did want to be in a sorority, I thought, in high school. never appealed to you? Mm Mm-mm. Why? I've just always kind of done my own thing. Like, the rules kind of deal, like, it was the, you got to wear your sash this shoulder and cross this way, and your skirt has to look this way, and look. Instruction order. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna wear this sash around my neck if I want it to be. Does warm. that? Does that? Um, <laughs> this is a real. This is a real question. It's gonna sound crazy, but it's a real question. He's about to insult me. Go no, I'm not. <laughs> now I'm saying like the instruction order. Does it ever? Do you think that has anything to do with like your relation? You know what I mean? Like your relationship status or not? My relationship status is great. No, I'm saying yes, <laughs> but I'm saying like. Moving forward in relationships, do you ever see that being a part of, like maybe you've had you've had a job but you didn't like them and you'll leave jobs, right? And then sure. you're in relationships and maybe there's a certain way relationships should go. So I think that uh, me not liking the kind of, I've never liked, I've never really liked being told what to do from an organizational standpoint, right? Because I've always, I've always craved my own identity, right? So I didn't want to dress like all the other girls. I don't want to wear my sash the same way. I don't want, but the part that I did like about Girl Scouts was the competitiveness. 
I really enjoyed having to go out and accomplish. Well, I like the idea of having to go out and accomplish a goal and sell these cookies and you win these prizes. Like I killed it at the school fundraisers. Right. But I got to dress how I wanted to dress. Yeah. I'm going to play with the team. But Donnie wants to look like Donnie I in the you. process. Um, when it comes to I, I work very, very well on a team. It's it's the parts of the team that trip my identity and makes me feel like I'm not being me. Right. So on a job where I'm working, when I was working with the team, I worked very well. I was always the boss, um, but I worked very, very well with my team. All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing. We get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at... Just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be, like, way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. At companies, when now that I'm thinking about it, the companies that I worked for where we had to have career apparel, meaning uniforms... For no reason. Hated it. I'm out of this. Give me three weeks to find something different. I'm moving and shaking, doing something different. But on companies, at companies where I got to show up as myself and contribute, star employee, star team member. I love it. Um, and then in personal relationships, um, <laughs> in personal relationships, that's never affected. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a team person. You know that. Like, I'm just... Well, all about the team. Yes, you do. I'm all about what can we do and accomplish, yeah. but I am also about having, like, I don't have to be known and be the leader. I'm totally fine with being in the background, but I need to be me in the background okay. or me in the forefront. Fox, you got employees? Oh, hell yeah. How many? 35. 35. Mm -hmm. So how do you look at the employee that doesn't, let's say they don't want to follow the system or they don't want to, they don't want to, like, there's a particular part where we got to fall in line, but you have the person that wants to do their own thing, but they're effective. It's hard to fire somebody who makes you money. So I am, so a lot of people know this, but I was in the United States Army. Before, I can tell. For, for I can see years. that. I can tell. Yeah, I was in the Army for 14 years. Um, probably would have did 20, but I ended up getting um, injured in Western Iraq. And um, you got injured? Wow. Uh, shot in the back. Really? Yes. Um, but the ops? I'm sorry. <laughs> the ops, the people who oppose you, your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Re Black what? By an Iraqi person? Uh, yes. Really? All right, so I'll give you out a backstory on this one. So um, it's Christmas Eve. Oh. And um, we're out. We, so my, my first... Uh, Military occupational specialty was I was a combat engineer, right? It's called MOS. And our job was to do route clearance. So in Iraq, during the Iraq war, um, they would put these things called IEDs on the road, called improvised explosive devices, and they will do it to disrupt the flow of transportation for um, uh, military forces and also the Iraq. They blow up one of the cars? Yeah, they, they'll blow off these devices to blow up bridges, cars, you name it. Right? But I'm saying, is it like while people are on the road? Yeah, while people are driving. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. So our job was to make sure that we clear the route. So we would go find these IEDs and dispose of them. Dang. So one night, we're doing a uh, route clearance. It was in uh, Ramadi, Iraq. And uh, they ambushed us. So IED goes off on the first vehicle. We stopped. And then the IED goes off on the rear vehicle. It was a five-vehicle convoy. And our job, because our um, vehicle has this thing called plexiglass, basically it's um, bulletproof Don't play or with fire retardant. We, we know. He, he, I think it's because you couldn't spell the word earlier. Only reason, <laughs> that's crazy. Now he's know. having to define what plexiglass <laughs> is for us. I only know because that's what Just they make a backboard out of. Yeah, David, you <laughs> anyway, tell him what plexiglass is. <laughs> you really so, don't know. So we're safe in our vehicles, but then we're always told to never get out. Right. So people are getting out because, you know, we're so the little landmine thing goes off in front of the first vehicle Not your and behind vehicle. the last vehicle. Exactly. They, they were they were trying to trap us. Gotcha. And then, so then they ambushed. Mm. So now they're they're firing rounds on the vehicles 
and people are getting out. Now I'm the platoon sergeant, which I'm the leader of the platoon, and people are getting out, and I'm like, "What the hell are y'all doing? Get you know, get get back in." So then I get out. So I'm trying to get people back in their, their vehicles, and then I There's feel this pinch. In that. Because, you know, a lot's going on, heart beating so much. You know, you're, you're trying to figure out where everything's oh. coming from. So I feel this pinch in my back. And I'm like, damn, what the hell is that? So then I finally get everybody in. And they were like, hey, what's that? You know, I think you're bleeding. And I had on full armor and everything. So they're like, hey, I, I think you're, you're bleeding. I was like, no, I don't think that's my blood. We're, we're good. So then we get back to base and we all we have to clear our weapons. You have this hot bullet in you and it's just, I didn't even you know, know it. I didn't know it, right? So we get back to base and you have to clear your weapons because, you know, when you got a round in the chamber, you got a live weapon. So you get back to base, you clear your weapon because while you're on base, you, you shouldn't have a round. How long is this time frame between the pinch to... It's your about 28 minutes. Okay, gotcha. We were right outside in the city and our base was right outside okay. the city. So then we're clearing our weapons. The next thing you know, I'm just like, I'm just, everything is just starting to get a little woozy and then I pass out. Um, and then three days later, I wake up in Lonsdale. Wow. Lonsdale, oh my gosh. So I wake up and I'm just all messed up. And, you know, everybody's coming in. They're like, oh, you know, he's finally up. He's finally up. And I couldn't move. So I can move, but I couldn't move my, my lower extremities. So you're thinking you're paralyzed at this point. Yeah. I didn't know what to think at that moment. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, what's going on? I'm, I'm trying to move. And they're like, hey, you know. So then they start, they sedated me. Woke up the next day and they said, you know, this is not good. You know, I'm like, what the hell you mean this is not good? Like, like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay. So they're like, I, I don't think this is good because the bullet is lodged between my L5 and S1. If y'all know about sciatica. So it's lodged. You might have to spell sciatica for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I had that, that, that moment of pity, like, wow, I probably won't ever walk again. But then I, you know, after a couple couple of days, I said, nah, nah, bro, you got to run around this building. So now my goal every day is to just move a pinky toe. Mm. 24 hours a day, my, my goal is to move a pinky toe. So probably after two months, I start moving. You know, I start moving, start moving my feet. Next thing you know, I'm actually lifting my legs up. Now I'm 205 right now. And I think then I was 215 in the military. Mm -hmm. I had shrunk down to like 185. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like 185. So, you know, they worked with me, um, went through rehab. And six months later, I'm walking. Nine months later, I'm running. Yeah. Wow. That was just pure freaking determination. Yes, Woo! yes, yes, yes. yes yeah, okay. Yes. We, we got to get into that story. That's, you weren't even going there with this he's about to talk about something else but there's so many extractions from that he couldn't move anything and the goal was to move his pinky toe pinky toe dang that's what do you get from that so as your first of all it's it's the resilience it just goes back to that resilience story that we talk about because i think your mindset in that moment determines your healing process mm. like you're listening at first and you're like mm, they're telling me that I'm not going to walk again. This is all bad. And for a couple of days, you're believing it. And then one day, you just suddenly start shifting and having this moment of, you know what? We're, we're beating this. I will move again. I will walk again. I will run again. And you were determined, starting with a very small goal. Are you goal. saying that... You manifested this? <laughs> is that you, what you Well, No, no, no. Are you saying, and let's have a conversation. I want to know your answer to that if you didn't decide that you are going to walk again, you'd be paralyzed today? Um, that's not what I'm saying. I am saying that your mindset can absolutely make a difference. There are some people who will walk again because medicine determines that they walk again, right? But doctors will even tell you it's so important to keep a certain mindset because your energy and your, your, the way that the brain works, it literally controls the rest of your body. And yes, what I am saying is that his mindset could have kept him paralyzed mm -hmm. for sure. What do you think? Well, from, from my point of view, every, from, from that moment on, everything I've ever decided that I wanted out of life, I've gotten. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that, because I'm a true believer of energy, right? So... 
when I decided that I was going to beat this, it's like it's like a it's like Moses part in the Red Sea, right? Yeah. Mm. Everything just got out of my way. Yeah. Um, even in business to li- business and in, in business today, and my wife would tell you this all the time. She's like, "You always get what you want." Mm. I said, "It's not really I, I get what I want; is get, I get what I desire." But when I make a decision and I'm going after it, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, a year ago, I said, I told her, I said, I'm going to be on Social Proof Podcast. Because I, I wasn't, I wasn't. What are you doing? Because we goals. We goals. We goals. <laughs> because like, you know, I, I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, I'm just, just now starting to get into YouTube, maybe during COVID. And I was like, man, that's a dope podcast right there. They got some great content. Then I next thing you know, I started watching y'all in my office. So instead of watching the news and all that stuff, yeah. I'll just have Social Proof's podcast playing. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be on that podcast. I even said, I'm going to meet Kenny. You did? Yeah. I said, you know what? I'm going to meet Kenny. Kenny helped me out with a whole lot of stuff. And he don't even know he, he helped me out with a whole right. lot of, you know, funding type of mechanisms. I said, I'm going to meet that. So, so you invited them to your home, not for her. <laughs> First, you were really trying to meet Kenny. They're a package. No, I already met Kenny already. Him oh, and I already. Okay. But you want to hang out? They with Kenny. already hung out. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> you okay. came with. But they're a package. <laughs> we're, too. we're package. Yes. The cool thing is, we all would have met anyway. We met at the um at the at the jail. Fort County jail. That's yeah. crazy. So yeah. you're saying, y'all, I'm going to be on this podcast, and like, you're who knew it was. I, I am we, a big believer. The phone call was say on that, my phone. Say that Just word again. What did I say? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? You knew. knew. You knew. That's a part of my six strategies right there. So it's like, you know, what if, what was, but I also got who knew, right? Who knew that I would be right here today? Not just walking to here, mm-hmm. yeah, but, you know, walking here, sit down to be able to, you know, have a, have a dialogue and a conversation with people that I looked on the screen and said, you know what? I'm going to be on that podcast one day. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love hey. it. I love it. I want to know, um, because I'm super interested, and I know you've got things going on in the government contracting space, but as we're looking to diversify like our portfolio, I am really looking for strategies that are uh, passive. The government works like this, right? They know you're going to make money. Okay. You know, we make money, and, and, I, and I told you about one contract. Mm. We have 10 mm. contracts. Um, so they know- active. Yeah, current okay. 10 active contracts. So they know you're going to make money but they don't want you to look at it as a hustle or passive. Mm. Right? They know you're going to make your margin. I'm looking at it as both. Right? So they they mm. don't want you to... T- and I've had a lot of uh, people in the government, contracting officers who are kind of the proven authority of contracts. They'll call me and say, listen, you're doing a great job by sharing this, this information on social media. But whatever you do, don't talk about uh, trying to make money off of the government. You're making money with the government. With the government. You're right? in partnership. Your partnership. That's why they call it um, uh, uh, private industry partners, PIPs. Okay. Not PIMP. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Hey, I like it. I think we said too much. <laughs> in, in your in your previous? <laughs> nah, just period. Like, cause, no, I, it's an entrepreneurial podcast, right? Yeah. We talk about business, making money. This is a means. It's not yeah. like I'm in love with the government and I just want to be in bed with the government, but... But you're, let me ask you this. And I think this is, because our money won't help us with getting contracts, correct? You said your what? Our money. We we got a couple of dollars together. You, you don't need money to win contracts. You don't. So, but w- can we do this? Can we set up a company, hire somebody to be the government contract? Liaison. Liaison. I was going to say CEO, but liaison. It's a really good word. Mm-hmm. Can we do that? Yeah, you definitely can. So then that person's purpose would be, so David and I are busy entrepreneurs in our own right, right? We've got individual businesses. We've got businesses together. We can set up an independent company or we can just set up a division of the company that we already have and hire a person whose job it is, is to go out and apply for all these government contracts, right? And then we could technically pay that person a salary for just doing that. That's ethical and totally above board. 100%. So we call those program managers. Program managers. And so that's... So our company's the program manager or the person we hire is the program the manager? The person you hire is the program Keep manager. Keep up, Chance. Right? The person we so hire. So like, I'm trying. I'm so trying. like my company, Black Fox, uh-huh. you know, I have my executive staff, but I also have a senior program manager. 
and he manages the contracts. He's the he's the person that sources it and done because you know as a CEO you, you're right you, you're busy you got things yeah. to do you got to run a company right yeah um, so you hire someone who run operations they're they're in charge of the contract operations then you can hire after somebody. you get the contract the operations of delivering the deliverables to the company to for the, the government to the government you have your program store. manager all they do you have your senior program manager and all that person does is procure a new business. That's correct. Go out and get more money. Because, Um, (laughs) is that what procure means? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, these contracts, they can get massive, right? So we have one with the, um, it's the Maryland Department of Health. Now, it used to be Maryland Department of of Human Services. Mm -hmm. And these, they're called um, IDIQs, right? Indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. These Mm -hmm. are massive contracts. Mm -hmm. The government would say, we got $50 million dollars for this particular contract, mm-hmm. but we're not ready to start yet. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like your, your, your company is the Walmart to that government agency. So right. when they need something, they put an order in, right? right? So they'll put an order in and you can start off with supply. And I'm talking about professional services, not products. You can have two people on a project starting this month. They'll come back the next month because they, they want to spend that 50 million. Because mm-hmm. if they don't spend that 50 million, they have to turn it in and that's yeah. bad juju because their budget for next year could be reduced because the, you know, the, the, the top um, echelon will say, well, we gave you 50 million. Mm-hmm. You spent 42. Mm-hmm. You turned in eight. Well, next year, I'm only going to give you 42. Gotcha. That makes sense. So you literally can max out um, on a task order by starting off with two people. And next thing you know, you have 40 people on that task order. Mm. Right. Mm. So the 35 employees that you have, how many of them are like coming into the office to write a grant every day? Um, I only have two. Two people who are proposal writers, not grant writers. Okay. And what the other 33 people do? They're they're working on contracts, on projects. So they're on site, so, so they could be at the DMV and... Yeah, so we have okay. 30... I how many then... I think David wants to know how many administrative team do you have that's running Oh, so it's, so Exelon is five. So, so we only five have five people. people running the top echelon. I call them ex- executive leadership. And you have the 30 that's out. In the field. Yeah. I want to say the field because honestly, we went remote right before COVID. Like remote. You know, we did a, a survey and then the government customer, they're already kind of doing remote anyway. Because a lot of different projects, you don't need to be in the office. Yeah. You literally can do yeah. it, you know, from anywhere. So we went 96% remote. Um, and I say 96% because some contracts, when it, when it comes to the Department of Defense, you have to be on site because you got access to certain type of information. Gotcha. Unclassified, classified, and et cetera. Here's what my thing you, though, man. Mm-hmm. And I can't stop thinking about it. Do you have a question? I do. So I wanted to know, you're talking a lot about like the automotive space, transportation space. Is that the lane? Like, did you pick a niche that you want to stay in or do you bid on like all contracts? So <sighs> I'm about to give you all some free game. And this is a part of my cohort too, right? Okay. So I'm about to give you all some free stuff. So Black Fox has only been in business four years since 2018. And one approach in government when it comes to the, the big contracts, I'm talking about anything $4.5 million or above. If you're coming in new into this space, you're not going to win that contract. You're just not. Government's not going to trust you as a new company with $4.5 million. But they will an existing company. And that exist, I mean, that existing company, that company with experience has already done business with the government, but they will set aside a percentage of that contract to a certified minority business enterprise, woman-owned, Black-owned, Hispanic-owned. They will say in the contract, 20% needs to go to this type of company. So now you reach out to that prime contractor, they will bring you on. And honestly, you don't have to write no proposals. You don't have to do anything. Because you have that certification, they'll just bring you on. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but what's 20% of 4.5 million that Mm -hmm. you didn't really have to do a whole lot of heavy lifting on? That's like almost 900,000. Yeah. Right? Okay, here's my question. And this is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm big thinking. You said like the contract was 5.8 million and 5.6. 5.6 million. And the net profit was like 200,000. No, 300,000. 300, 
Mm-hmm. Right. That's one because we still got operations where we, I mean, we've, we invest a lot in the company four years in the game because there's certain certifications that a really big corporation needs. Right. ISO certifications, if you've never heard of that, that's your ISO 9001. So it, it's, it's a quality management. So now as we go after bigger contracts, we let the government customer know, hey, we got this industry standard certification. Mm-hmm. That's a gold stamp to say we're, we, we deliver a high quality product. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po- positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. Gotcha. Uh, We we invested money into ISO 22301, which is Business Continuity Management Certification. That's letting our government customer know that no matter what happens, we're going to um, ensure this contract uh, survives. COVID, a natural disaster, we put policies in place. Uh, we've invested into uh, CMMC recently and paid a, penny, a big penny on that one. Um, it's uh, cyber maturity, um, cyber maturity, Let, letting the government know that we've put things in place in our business that w- we, we reduce the risk of cyber attacks to our company. So okay. that's why I say that 300K, what we've made thus far, is short because we're investing a lot into the company. You say I thus say, far. Is there still money to be earned of that $5.6 million contract? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Okay. And, it, and, and we're in a renewal period next year. So we're, we're definitely going to get renewed for the, for the upcoming new contract. I get it. So they, they give you the $5.6 million. You're putting a lot into certification and all this other stuff that you need. So when you renew the next year, it'll probably be a much bigger margin. Oh, yeah. We're looking at about 800000 That's just one contract. Got you. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, that that had to make sense to me. You know what I mean? To be able to manage $5 million and I, I say only, but to only make yeah, 300000 sounds like a really small percentage. Yeah. But remember, yeah. that's only one. Right. So we got 10 and one contract is half a million. One contract is 2.1. One contract is, you know, 7.1. But you got all the margins aren't the same, though. That's right. Got it. Got it. So can you tell me about a bigger margin uh, contract? Like, or, or what that looks like and how to tell the difference? Because we want to know what to go after. So depends on the agency, right? So you have the top three agencies, federal, mm-hmm. is um, Department of Health and Human Services. They spend about $1.7 trillion a year. Um, you have Department of Defense. Um, usually they're number one, but because of COVID, Department of Health and Human Services increased their budget. Sure. DOD is about $1.5 trillion. And then Social Security Administration, they're roughly around $1.3 trillion. And I'm just talking about the top three now. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're doing business with Department of Defense, your margins are going to be higher. So mm-hmm. let's say you win a contract for $4 million, right? You're probably going to pocket about a million. Mm. The Department of Defense, because their margins are higher. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but federal agencies are broken down into mission essential functions. And I know I'm talking a little bit too techy up here, mm. but and this is where you know, you know, as we go into this recession, who to do business with. So you have primary mission essential functions, and you have mission essential functions. So certain agencies, no matter what happens, their budget is forecasted five years in advance. Like, mm. They always have money coming in. Some agencies, their budget may be one to two years. Gotcha. So they may reduce their budget in the, any event of a recession. But if you do business with DOD, which anybody can, um, they will always have money coming in. So if you win a $5 million contract, you're going to pocket about a million dollars. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. We like, we like those margins. 
I like those margins. I like those margins. I mean, because it's, it's, this is not, we want to actually provide a great service, obviously, yeah, to the government. But even you're not providing a service, it's finding a good company that it's can provide the a service. Good company that can and they don't call you, right? They just do their thing. They do what they do. We talking about the agency or the company? Nah, the company that you hire. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of familiar with the space a little bit because I uh, interviewed my man Jason White a couple times and uh, my boy Brandon, he's trying to get into it, which we could probably hire Brandon. We take, give him a salary him a to salary. kind of figure it out, mm-hmm. to learn it. You got a course? Yes, have a program, yes. We give him, uh, we give him um, the program, train, teach. Mm-hmm. I'm with that. I am into non- comfortable or non-traditional ways of making money as an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, you think of a product, sell it, make money, reinvest, sell it. So typical. So typical. I told myself, I was in the shower the other day and I told y'all. Okay. (laughs) I'm just saying. I didn't like your reaction. No. Glad that you do it. it, I I was like, yeah. And actually I was, I, I actually meant to put it on Twitter because it would have been a good post. That you were in the shower? Stay focused. I'm trying to, but where are you going with And I feel like my beard's growing. I feel it tingling. Yes, so, <laughs> shouts, out, shouts out to King's Chamber. Um, I, was, I, was, I was saying to myself, I said, yo, the next really good idea I come up with, I'm going to secure, I'm going to set it up as a business. Mm-hmm. I'm going to secure the domain and all the assets. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to hire a CEO yeah, and just pay the person a salary to wake up every day and go build it. Now, you have to find somebody that is self-motivated and that's not going to ask you, um, ah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how that works, though. Like finding someone to run a company. But you probably have to find somebody who's already successfully run a company to run a company because you don't want to take a chance on somebody who's never run a company. Depending on your level of involvement, but it sounds like, yes, in, in this case, you got to find someone yeah. who's successful. And, 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 and everybody that wants to, everybody that, everyone that feels like they can run a company, I mean, every everyone feels like they could run a company. Yo, it's hard. But here's the thing. You don't, Running a company You don't have hard. to hire a CEO to run the company. Right. I mean, just hire somebody that's a COO, chief operations officer. Mm-hmm. But then the COO doesn't always necessarily have the vision on where it should go. You They're hire- thinking about the operations of what we should do, right? In some cases, but there are a lot that have already had companies before. And you just say, hey, I'm going to bring you in the role of COO. They still have the mindset of a CEO and they're a hybrid of doing COO work as well. So why don't those people succeed in their own companies? Well, I know in government contracting, right? So you have a program called the 8A program. If y'all, if you have, if, have anybody ever heard of the 8A program? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So the 8A program is a program by the Small Business Administration. And we're, my company is in the 8A program to where they take a company that's new, that's you know, trying to grow into the space of government contracting. And they say that we're going to give you all the assistance you need to be successful. And we're setting aside contracts that we can sole source to you, or you're going to be in a small pool of competition to get these contracts. And these contracts, um, the, the, the program is for 10 years and you cap out at $100 million. Mm-hmm. 80% of everybody who's come through the 8A program has capped out at $100 million. Really? Like, no joke, right? If if you have a good strategy in the program. Some and they're people, taking new companies. Taking new companies. Let's, I mean, you're, you don't have to be a new company, but let's say you've been in business. Well, we got ours, what? Year three? Year three, we got our 8A certification. So... Were you making any money? Um, our, our new contract, that's $35 million. That's how we are securing that $35 million contract. No, I'm saying like when you got, when you, when you came into the program, were you already making money? Yeah, we were making money, yes. Gotcha. Okay. But you don't have to be making money to get yeah. to the 8A program. So they will give you, like literally, basically feeding you contracts. And a lot of times people get fed contracts, but you're not growing your company, your business. So you will graduate either 10 years or $100 million out of it. And now you're like, well, what do I do next? So I know a lot of people, and we live in the D.C. area as well, um, as well as here in Atlanta. What do you mean, do, what do you do next? $100 million. 
<laughs> I'm done. done. Yeah, I'm but on some people of the world. <laughs> but some people don't think like that, right? right so right. they're looking for because you know you may be out of the program at the age of forty five. Mm. So now you're like, what do I do next? Well, mm. how about I become a part of this company and help grow this company? Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't be my strategy. Yeah. Um, but but he, yeah, I, I mean, 80%, that's a that's a large number. Um, it's just in my experience, I mean, most people who feel like they can run a company can't. And who's going to take a, a chance on that? To, okay, so I actually I had somebody that I was working with um, one time and we're sitting down, we're talking, we're, we're talking about like what needs to be done. And they were just so confident on these are the things that you need to do. You do this and you do that and you do that. I'm like, well, because I'm in it, right? I have some rebuttals. Yeah. If we do this, then this happens. You're like, no, it doesn't work like that. Yes, it does. I've been here before, right? And I think people underestimate what it takes to actually run a company. Because I think people can either, for the most part, they can either do a thing or they have like a vision of a thing, but typically you don't have both. Like how are we going to make money and run the company? Some people are good at making money, but can't run a company. Some people are really good in that role where they can take a project and build the project, but you're singularly focused on that one project and they don't understand what it's like to have a bunch of projects, you have to manage the people that are over these particular projects. So that's what I'm saying. Like, how do we, do we find somebody and recruit somebody, pay somebody top dollar that has successfully built something mm -hmm. and have them build this? Or do we take a chance on training? I'm not that good at training. You ever thought about looking at companies who already have a CEO and making a pitch to that person to come over to run your company? Steal them. And steal them. That happens all the time. Yeah, for sure. I teach my clients to do that all the time. Like, go and steal the talent that you need yeah. from somebody who's already successfully in that role. So I, I am a career trainer. Like, that's what I did as a career. I don't, for me, either option would work. We can train somebody or we can hire someone who's already in that role. I think it boils down to what our goals are and what we can afford to, to budget for that for that role will determine if you're hiring top notch or if you're training somebody from scratch. Um, we should document our journey. Like take, like have a concept, hire a CEO mm -hmm. or hire somebody to run the business. I the gun with the CEO thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody that when they wake up in the morning, they're responsible for every part well, of it. And that they, is, that doesn't have to be a CEO. Like I would say, it? Because that could be a project manager. It could a be a managing property manager. Partner. It could be a managing partner. But, th but they're managing a... So a project manager is managing a project. No. So, for example, I was a project manager. My role in a property management company, in a real estate company, was project manager. Mm -hmm. That meant that all of the projects happening in my region, I oversaw. Yep. So I met with the contractors. I approved the final tiles and floors and ca cabinets and countertops. I oversaw the property managers of the every single thing mm. for the whole entire new build division, Right. So it wasn't me just at a property. When I was a property manager, then I, my focus was that was on that one property. But then I had a regional manager or an aerial manager, an area manager, and then a general manager. Those people, the person who needs to oversee the process doesn't necessarily need to be CEO. I don't even think we're in a place to be prepared to onboard a CEO. I think we need somebody who oversees more from an operational perspective, business management, that kind of that role. I think if somebody told me, you know, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars to go build this. I want you to go build it. Yeah. I can go build it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I, I want somebody like, that's me. Right. And that's, that's not that's necessarily space. CEO. What is, so what am I? You got to find somebody that's 80% you. You're not going to get 100%. True. But the, 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 the thing, it's, it's the same though, because, so somebody that's managing a project, right? They have one benefit that makes their life a lot easier. They don't necessarily have to worry about all the numbers. Mm -hmm. So when you're, let's say you're, you're in a role. Mm -hmm. So someone was paying you mm -hmm. to do this. Well, there's still somebody has to consider, okay, yes, Donnie's picking a tile and, and all that and managing everybody. I have to pay her to do that mm -hmm. for one. 
And the bottom line is on me. And you make different decisions when it's your money out there. It's easy to spend somebody else's money. It's easy to say, yo, let's, we're going to do this and that and this and that. And it's not your money. You might do a great job, but you got, you still got to consider that money's going up. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have operating budgets. So why not just become like a, like a investor in a company? A thirty, a thirty percent investor of a company that's already doing it. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna invest in company. We could, but I like eighty percent more. What do you mean? The eighty percent that we were talking about earning before, I like that better than thirty percent. Yeah, but you don't got to do nothing. It's already working. So say you take a cup. It's almost like like coaching. Right. So if, if, if I'm coaching y'all and the advice that I give, you already have a business. You already you're already worried about payroll. You're already worried about division and finding staff that kind of builds. If I give you some advice and it takes you to another level, I would rather take 30 percent of that than 80 percent of my own company where I got to find everybody. I still got to have a vision and have meetings and all kinds of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'd much with me personally you're collecting 30 percent. Yeah. Listen. She's greedy. She's greedy. (laughs) I am interested in diversifying revenue strategies, period. Yes. In some instances, that will be through investing in existing companies, people, things. In some instances, that will be in building something. Now, what I will say is at this point, because running a company is hard, I am that person who is both CEO and COO. It's just what I am, right? Right. Um, very few people can operate in that space. Running a company, you guys, is not easy, okay? I don't care if you were the manager, the shift manager, the team leader, it is not the same. Especially when you're running a company and those decisions are costing you financially, right? Mm -hmm. So you're running a company and running your budget all at the same time. It's, It's super not easy. I don't think that I am in... I don't think I have any interest, though, like with the things that we're going to do. I got to bring somebody on or we're not starting the project. I have no more interest in fully running from the ground up by myself a Mm -hmm. company. I did that dirty work. I did the up all night, 18 hours a day. We're still doing it. Still (laughs) still doing it, right? Still, (laughs) Still to some degree doing it very much. And so, yeah, I mean, either investing or hiring someone to do it. I want to know, Fox, so you have multiple companies. You invest, you, you're a government, con- you, are you a government contractor? I don't like to use that term, government contractor. What's we, the term? We, we say it, but, you know, I'm a business owner and the government is, I like that one, perspective. Of my, government is one of my customers um, or, or a piece of my portfolio. The, re- the reason being, my portfolio. portfolio talk. You know, portfolio the, talk. The, the reason being because, you know, one thing I learned, so Verizon, Facebook, Amazon, they all have government contracts. And that's 65% of their revenue stream. What do you yes. mean? So Amazon has billion dollars worth of contracts. Gotcha. What billion. about Facebook? Facebook has billions of dollars of contracts. Give me an example. I can't disclose their contracts because they're on the civil defense side or the... Um, classified side right Right. Mm -hmm. so they do a lot of data analytics Mm, so i can see that yeah they do a lot of data analytics same thing with verizon as well so Mm -hmm. a lot of these calls that we're making a lot of that data is being collected out in utah in a massive one million square foot facility Mm -hmm. um so they all have massive contracts and then the facilitation of the wi-fi in the building all that that's why at&t verizon they're always competing against each other because they're going after these massive contracts right so we always want to make sure that we have government customers so that way when a recession does come and a piece of your, because we do private corporation contracting mm-hmm. as well. We do um, work with pharmaceutical companies as well. All right. So if that starts to decrease, then we know we still got revenue from our government customers because those contracts are locked in for one year, three years, five years, 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully that answers you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What made you say, um, so you're already in business, I'm assuming prior to four or five years ago when you got into, when you included government contracting as a part of your portfolio, what were you doing prior to that kind of segued into this space? So I got out the military um, and then I got a job. 
mm-hmm. you know, because I was I've, I've been in the military since I was eighteen, right? So um, once I you know recovered, I still did another eight years in the military, mm-hmm. but I was doing a lot of special operations stuff. I couldn't do um, I couldn't be on the 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 combat engineer side, so I decided to go civil affairs, which is civil affairs on the special operations side. Yeah. So I'm jumping out of planes. I'm doing all this this crazy stuff. Um, but on the civil affairs side, you're attached to a special forces unit, but you get to go to the embassy. Yeah. So I, I was kind of a hybrid to where I would still do covert missions, but I, I had an opportunity to be inside the embassy. So I'm meeting with all these... Um, dignitaries, uh, officials. I had I sat down with uh, Hillary Clinton one time when she was the um, Secretary of State. Where was she like? This was in Indonesia. Oh, she cussed me out. Really? Yeah. Because I, I speak fluent Indonesian. I speak right. Tagalog. Um, I speak a few different foreign languages. Cause that's Girl, you got your man. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> He's a businessman. He's a this gentleman. Man. He's been shot before. He's a <laughs> You got the whole package, girl. <laughs> That's hilarious. So we got lunch conversation. Right. And I just, <laughs> laughing at blessing. She's looking like, wow. <laughs> so I'm 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 in the the embassy of Indonesia, the US Embassy of Indonesia, and I'm, and I'm briefing. I'm I'm nervous as hell. But the army kind of pushed me to do these briefings. I'm, you know, putting all these PowerPoint presentations together. And I was like, you know, I can probably kind of do this on my own. Because that moment, we had an incident in Indonesia where we had a soldier get into it with the um, president of Indonesia's son. And they ended up getting a fight. They, they got into a fight. And it just turned into an ugly thing. And I was in transition taking over um, for the... Um, the current person that was there. So I didn't know a lot about the situation, but I got there and I remember she just bust into the conference room and she lit me up. Like, tell me why you should be here. I mean, hey. and the only thing you can really do is just take it. You know, you can't really talk back. So I'm just taking me it. And Hillary would have been going back. What? back. No. Oh, you need no. to be yelling at Monica. That's why. Right. <laughs> I should have said that. I should have said that. Don't be projecting <laughs> this energy to me. It should have gone to ML. You hear me? Hill? I definitely shouldn't have said that. God, so, you know, going viral. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so this I, is not the way I wanted you to go viral. <laughs> <laughs> keep that, keep that same energy. Keep that right? same energy. <laughs> all right. So, so because I'm so used to being under pressure, you know, I handled the situation very well. But everybody after that came to me and was like, "We saw what happened. We know that it was you were innocent bystander. Mm. You handled that very well. Like, wow, you really can probably." do this on your own, you know? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of out of the military at this moment. And so I get out the military. I, I moved here to Atlanta the first time and I started working for the Georgia Department of Health, mm-hmm. but I was their mm-hmm. communications person. Mm-hmm. But I was contracting out work to government agencies as well. So I was a communications person, but I was paying $1.2 million contract to do communications I pay somebody $750,000 to do social media management. I'm paying private companies to do this. So I was like, all right, I got to start paying attention a little bit more to this process because y'all paying me $60,000 a year. Right. I'm a (laughs) wounded combat veteran. I'm handing out all this money to these companies. So then I said, okay, what agencies do I want to do business with? And FEMA was one that popped into my head. I think uh, we had one of the hurricanes that came in through Georgia and I saw the money that was going on. I said, I need to go work for FEMA. So end up moving to DC, you know, glad I moved there because I met my beautiful wife. There. So I end up relocating to DC, work for FEMA, right? I was in their grants program directorate. I was a program manager there and I was a part of a $27 million portfolio. And I was issuing out grants to private companies one grant was $2.3 million and a company was installing fire detectors in people's homes. And, mm. mm. in, in, you know, in, in, in low cost areas. And I said, wait a minute. I just wrote a, I just, you know, wrote a, a well, I didn't, I didn't write it. I approved of this grant to go out to this company. And I, and the question I asked was, how are y'all even measuring this? Cause we all, we know grant funding is fraud, waste and abuse. Right. It, it's, it's abuse. A lot mm. of people abuse grant money because there's no mechanisms or policies in place for you to know if I give this company this grant, they're actually doing what they're supposed to do. Oh, with wow. this grant. 
So somebody came to me and was like, why don't you start your own company? Now, my nickname in the military was Black Fox. That was mm. my call sign, Black Fox. And it was like, you know, you should start your own company. So Where does the name Fox come from, though? Real quick. I'm sorry. So, should I tell them the story? I'd love to. All right. <laughs> She's like, I want to know, too. Where does the name come from? <laughs> so, um, um, when, I was, when I was injured in Iraq and going through that period, right, People don't understand this. A lot of combat veterans, we suffer from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Still today? today Still, yeah, most definitely to this day. But it's more like I've, I've, I've used it as an, it's an advantage to me now yeah. in my business world. Um, but I also um, was diagnosed with DID, um, dissociative identity disorder, right? That's where your brain splits from, from trauma, from traumatic events. And next thing you know, you have, and honestly, that's what made me start walking again. Right. Like when I was in the hospital, I would see this other person that was me and be telling me, get your butt up. Wow. Not in those like terms. Outer body experience. But it was like, get up, like no pity on yourself. And I'm like, okay, all right. And that person identified themselves as Fox. So next thing you know, I'm, you know, trying to manage and balance this personality. So, and she would tell you this, like, I would go on stage somewhere or do a presentation and I'm Fox. And I would get off and I'm like, how the hell did I just do that? When you say the person identified themselves as Fox, the person in the room saying, I'm Fox. Yeah, it's a different personality. Oh. So it balances the load of, and, and, and what I've learned over the years is that I think we all have multiple personalities. For sure. Right? We do. We only got one. <laughs> in situations, you may be different because I know that when I'm around my kids and my family, I'm like a totally different person. I'm like, you know, a gummy bear on my kids. When I'm out in the business world, I'm fine. I'm a gummy I'm bear there too, bro. I am like, I got one. I only got one. I don't got the DID, I don't think. And I got five. Dang. You have five that you've identified. Five kids. No. Oh, five kids. Uh oh. I'm like, <laughs> it's a nail. <laughs> it's a bit extreme. There was wow, a movie about that. <laughs> you know what? I thought I thought like that people movie, like that movie is BS, right? It's not it doesn't work like that. It's not like that, right? It's like more of like a situational thing to where you can turn it off and turn it on. Yeah, I thought like Beyonce and Nicki Minaj, I thought that was just them have I thought it was a part of their kind of like persona, but that's a real thing. Yeah. It is a real thing. That's interesting. Yeah, I I have it. I mean, I've not been who's the names? with it. I think Donnie and Denitra. My real name is Denitra. Donnie mm -hmm. is that other girl. So Denitra is who we see today. Uh, Denitra is who you see right now. It's it's situational. It's on situational. and off. When I hit the stage, it's Donnie for sure. Like when I'm on stage and I'm teaching and I'm talking webinars, it's Donnie. For sure, but Turns Denitra, on, right? Denitra was last night at the movie premiere. There's hundreds of people in this theater that, you know, and so many people are like, oh, hey, Donnie, like, you know, recognizing mm -hmm. they want pictures and I have to go away. I'm telling Kenny, like, let's just go in the theater and sit down away from all these people. Like, Denitra gets social anxiety. Donnie yeah. is like, what's up, bees? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> so a couple of drinks when you're in the club twer twerking, going crazy. That could be either or. I mean, you know, so <laughs> that could that could go either way because so these personalities that you speak of, they don't need the influence of any kind of substance. Mm. Right. So it could it could go either way. Denitra on a few drinks probably gets sleepy and is ready to go home. Donnie on a few, few drinks is turned up standing mm. on sofas. I don't stand on sofas for real, but you know, I think I've seen you stand on. never seen me stand <laughs> on a sofa ever. I want to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Took your shoes off and everything barefoot on the sofa. I was like, Ew, what are you, you are not Donnie, what are you the doing? <laughs> he is not telling the truth. All right, yeah, man, no, that's, listen, that's actually a thing. And I think it's important. Um, I am really interested when I was saying that 20 plus, you know, 15, 20 years ago, people were trying to get me information about government contracts, I either at first thought it was a scam when I realized it was a real thing um, because they used to do these ads like on Craigslist and in the newspaper. And I don't know if you remember like being desperate to find a job, you come up against the, uh, come up upon Who's the- Who's your them, Donnie? Denitra was dead. <laughs> your girl Donnie. So they have some like, ads on Craigslist looking Donnie for a job. You're broke, busted, disgusted. You, you, you ever cute? came across Pull that, up. that, that <laughs> one career listing, the one job listing, and it ended up being like, 
a perfume company that wanted you to sell their perfume. And so when I saw these government contracting things, I associated it with that for whatever Mm. reason. But then when I realized it was a real thing, the process was really intimidating to me. But now I've realized I've missed out on 15 to 20 years of experience and revenue being so close-minded to this space. And it sounds like something that literally any adult person can do. All my all my mentors in DC, because a lot of people don't know this, but Maryland, Virginia, DC has the most black millionaires. Really? Maryland, Virginia, DC has Maryland, the most black millionaires. Mar- Maryland, DC, Virginia has the most black millionaires. Atlanta's nope. gotta have the most hundred thousandaires though, for sure. For sure. <laughs> a lot of for sure, without a doubt. Or the most undocumented millionaires. Oh yeah. 100 <laughs> <laughs> the ones that don't file taxes. Yeah, because, that's how I said Atlanta. Because 80, 82% of them are not on social media. You may find them on LinkedIn. Dang. But because a lot of them have companies. And you, you got to remember, we're talking trillions of dollars up here. So if you... Almost every company I know has a $10 million contract. $10 million contract. You know, my mentor now, um, his company is doing about $250 million a year. And mm. matter of fact, no, they're $300 million a year because when I talk to them on Monday, they want a $50 million contract to add on to their, their portfolio. And when I'm around him and, and a lot of the group, you know, they're, they're mid-40s, 50s, but a lot of them are $12 million, $5 million, $15 million. And you get a part of these groups up there and you're like, wow, like, I didn't know I'm, I'm around 50 millionaires who you try to look them up on IG and they have no social media presence. Yeah, yeah. like you. so. I just got started. <laughs> <laughs> like, like <you. laughs> 20, 2019 is when Give I me real started. quick before we wrap up, for someone who's watching this and they're saying, hey, I was like Donnie, totally opposed or closed-minded to the idea. Didn't feel like doing the work because that's really all it was for me. Didn't feel like mm-hmm. doing the work. What are the, What are the first maybe three steps that someone should take who is now interested in getting in, involved in government contracting? Well, first step, you should take my program, right? I have a, a, a program called GovCon Blueprint that just launched literally 60 days ago. It's taken off like crazy. Um, you can go to my social media at Fox underscore Wade, um, go to my uh, bio and um, you can enroll into the program. Um, that's the first step. Um, number two, start off with your local government. Local government. And people miss this step all the time, right? You literally can go to your board of commissioners meetings, right? Because it's all publicly open. I've been to a few. I don't know if y'all ever been to your board of commissioners meeting for your county. Mm -mm. You can go there and you literally, they literally tell you what opportunities are out, who's winning what, what's the budget is Mm. um, in that direction. But you need to start developing the relationships with the people who are at those board of commissioners meetings. Like developer relationship. I'll give you a good example real quick. I went to mine, which I'm fairly back new to Atlanta. And I went to mine last Tuesday. I went to the Board of Commissioners meeting because they have a small group and they all know each other. They didn't know who I was. Now, I, now I, I put on a suit, put on, you know, put on everything. I'm in the back of the room. They're all coming to me. Who are you? Like, we don't know who you are. Tell us more about you. You know, my name is Fox. You know, here's my company, blah, blah, blah. And yesterday I got a call to say, hey, um, it was great meeting you, great talking to you. We have a contract where we need a Wi-Fi installation in our building, the whole building. Can you do it? It's like, you're damn right we can do it, mm-hmm. right? Have we ever done that before? No, but we'll find the people that can do it. Um, that's number two. Number three, make sure that you have a company, right? Register your business. You'll never hear me say, go get your LLC, right? No, you need to make sure that you understand what business structure you need because, you can be a sole proprietor and still make millions of dollars, right? Mm-hmm. You can, you know, get your LLC, get your LLP, all these different, you know, understand what business structure works with your company and then go ahead and register with whatever procurement um, portal that they have. So a lot of people say, make sure that you register in the SAM.gov. If you want to do business with the federal government, you need to be registered with the System for Award Management, which is SAM.gov. Mm-hmm. If you don't, your, your, your local, um, your state has a procurement portal, which is all free, that you can register your business in and your local government as well. Yep. I like, I like that. I like it very So much. Uh, we're going to start a government contracting business? Yeah, I mean, I think it's genius because the whole concept behind government contracting is that you're winning contracts to perform a job that you just go and contract 
Somebody professionals to, to do. do. But why like, would you start a, a new company when you can just use social proof? This is already an established company. See, the mm. government doesn't care about your company's name. They just want you to do the work. And yeah. they want to see that we've been in business for a minute. No. You can start today and win a contract today. Yeah. Well, we already have a company. We have sure. a company established. Yep. Yeah. It's actually called the David and Donnie Group. Mm-hmm. A group of companies. Now we don't have any other. We don't have any groups just yet. We don't. That's our, just, that will essentially be the holding company for all of the companies that go into our portfolio. The groups. Portfolio. Yeah, we have we have Wade Inc. <laughs> Wade, Wade Inc. is our portfolio because he has she has her own accounting firm as well that we do government. And is it account. under Wade Inc. What the port the no. the group? No, not yet. We don't put hers on it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, it just makes sense yeah. to do that sure. from a when you start talking about trust and legacy. But I'm gonna give y'all stuff. a freebie, right? I'm gonna give y'all a hold freebie. that. We're gonna do our our. Uh, we gotta do a quick commercial, and we're gonna have you close us out. Close us out with the freebie. I'm talking about okay. you all. Oh, let's do you it. Too. All okay. right, hold that. Okay, hold on. What's this episode sponsored by? King's Chambers. King's Chambers beard, beard oil. oil. And ladies, where did they grab some of your man's beard oil and throw it on your edges? Yeah, I see. Yeah, you. Your edges look a little better than they did in the beginning. <laughs> Is there a website to buy this? Uh, right now, I'm developing it. Right now, you're developing it. Okay. All right. Well, yes, it is because by the time, oh, no, it's tomorrow. They're going to see this tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> However, we can find you on Instagram at yep. Freddy's Blades. Freddy's Blaze. F R E D D I E S Blaze. B L A D E S. Get them up. On Instagram, you guys. No, seriously, it feels good and it smells good. Like, mm-hmm. this is something that I'm comfortable, uh, like, laying my head on, you know, if you're rubbing up, if you got your little honey. And, I, and I've been rubbing it into my cuticles all day and they're not as ashy. I've been all day. We've only been here for, like, 90 <laughs> minutes, but I got you. This episode is also sponsored by The Morning Meetup. The Morning Meetup is the only organization that gathers every single day a community of entrepreneurs that are growing together. Every month, we have a theme that you need to learn. Listen, you get all the taxes, tactics and stuff on YouTube. You can go to every webinar, but we are a community where we're getting information and there's people you can bounce the information off of. Okay, so stop doing entrepreneurship alone. Go to themorningmeetup.com and join me. I'm there every morning. I would love to see your face. I love to teach you the stuff that I can't teach on the podcast or can't teach uh, on webinars. So every single morning, whatever morning it is, today, if you're listening to it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, if the morning is passed, then I'll be on tomorrow morning. If it's like five in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, a couple more hours, you'll see me. Let's meet. themorningmeetup.com. Donnie. This episode is also brought to you by SixFigureEDU.com. We have the strongest, dopest, most, um, I want to say it's the most, oh, what's the Get word? Get your pitch I'm together. Using? What's the word? Get that your I'm pitch down. This is, this is new. This is the <laughs> most comprehensive, you guys. The this company's the, not new. Her pitch is new. The pitch is, okay. the pitch is not new. This word injected into it is new. Mm. Can I finish? What's the or word? you want to continue to interrupt me? Please. All right. So, This episode is brought to you by SixFigureEDU.com, the most comprehensive training platform for coaches and consultants. We literally develop and train coaches and consultants from scratch. So what does that mean? You know something, you know how to teach something, you know how to do something, provide a service. You may even want to create a course, a coaching program, a group coaching program, a one-on-one coaching program, whatever that looks like. I teach you through Six Figure EDU how to do just that. We have an amazing program, amazing program live Q&A every single week with some of our top coaches. And we have students that are making six figures over and over and over again. We even got some seven figure students. So sixfigureedu.com. This episode is also brought to you by Post to Pay. David, did you know? I didn't. Mm -hmm. Did you know that (laughs) there are entrepreneurs like Fox who are amazing at what they do but they clamor up when it comes to talking about what they do on social mm. media. Were you aware of that? I didn't. Yeah. No. So Tell we have more. this group called Post to Pay. What? It's $37 a month. What? Do you know what they get? What? Three text messages every single day, excluding major holidays. Direct, every day? Every day. Directly to your phone. Do you know where these text messages came from? No, I don't. Tell me more. (laughs) Literally, you guys, if you've ever been on my social media and you just love the way I come up with these captions that are really compelling, intriguing, and strike engagement with the audience, I'm giving them to you. To your phone every single day. Three 
text messages a day, seven days a week, minus holidays, $37 a month, post to paid. Never worry about, again, what caption you should put under that reel or under that picture or under that carousel. I got you. Got you. Sounds good. And that brings us to the Fox Way. Fox Way One, thank you so much for coming. Thank we you appreciate you, man. Uh, very enlightening. Uh, it'd be your stories inside the stories that really get like he wasn't going to talk about getting shot or getting yelled at <laughs> by um by uh Monica's op. <laughs> I can he got, he got so he got so <laughs> he's so deep on so many levels but one uh thank you so much man but um we we definitely love to have you kind of close out with how they can get in touch with you I'm sure we'll have a link below yeah for something uh to connect with you but also l- l- Take us out with the game that you was going to give us the coaching because we're ready to be coached. We're ready to go. All right. So you said something earlier about creating opportunities, right? Yeah. So you can create an opportunity. Y'all have such a great platform and government agencies want you. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, what is the mission of the Georgia Department of Health? To keep Georgia healthy. Right. But they're, they're, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they have to push out the information to let you know that we have these resources. Right. And they understand that social media, YouTube is where people are at. People got their phones. Mm-hmm. So you can call them up and say, hey, you know, we see that you have some low engagement on your IG or whatever. We would like to help you out with that. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they say, okay, cool. Well, let's set up a meeting. And then you you brief on how you can help them solve their problem. Mm-hmm. And then you tell them how much it'll cost. They take that, which is called a business case. They'll take it to their leadership. And then they can say, well, we, we do have a gap here. This company can help us out. It's going to cost this much. So now they get that funding approved. And next thing you know, you get an email with a contract. And that's what we call unsolicited contract. I love it. I love it. So that's what we do is that we reach out to agencies first and talk to them and say, well, we look at your audits, right? So each government agency has a public size audit. Mm -hmm. And those audits have where the agencies have gaps at, where they didn't meet a certain goal. You just say, hey, I see you got this audit out here. This is issue. We can help you solve it for this much. Yeah. I love it. And you teach us all how to do that in your course. What's that course called again? GovCon Blueprint. GovCon Blueprint. How do we get it? All right. So you can go to win.govconblueprint.com. That's W-I-N dot G-O-V-C-O-N-B-L-U-P-R-I-N-T dot com. GovConBlueprint.com. You can also go to uh, Fox dot Fox underscore Wade on IG. Uh, click the link in my bio. I do have a free ebook that people can take an advantage of on how to start, like more like an introduction on how to get into government contracting as well. Um, I also talk about how to leverage the DBE, which we didn't get a chance to talk about that. But uh, the federal government has uh, has um, um, pushed out an executive order saying that they want to see more disadvantaged businesses. When they say disadvantaged, they're talking about Black-owned, Hispanic-owned, women-owned businesses, and they want to do business with you. They've actually increased their percentage numbers from 5% to 15 and then as of the other day, they increased it to 25 So that's letting us know that fiscal year 2023, a lot of disadvantaged-owned company businesses are going to make a lot of money. You can also go to your Georgia Department of Transportation. They have a DBE program as well. I went to that meeting two weeks ago and they told me that 25% of a $3.4 billion annual budget will be going to DBE. So if whatever space you're in, cosmetology, accounting, communications, social media, uh, you need to make, make that contact with them as soon as possible because money is going to be coming your way via these government contracts. I love it, man. Listen, thank you so much for coming, bro. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. me. Thank Glad you. that up. <laughs> really, really good. Listen, and thank y'all, everybody out there for uh, for following, watching, subscribing. We really, really appreciate the support. We appreciate the love. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe on all platinum platforms. The um, the audio experience on shop on Spotify and Apple. Also, make sure you're following myself and my illustrious. <laughs> co-host Donnie Wiggins um, but yes we appreciate y'all subscribe share it with a friend make sure you follow Fox alright we out here we Peace. are out bye you guys <laughs>